Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video I'm gonna share with you my top five tips for switching chords. Before we get into the lesson, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks. So for all these tips, I'm gonna use two chords, a D and an E. And we're gonna talk about switching between those two. But the five tips I give you work for all chords. So tip number one is hover your fingers. Okay, so what I mean by that, let's look at a D chord. Now the D chord, it requires a weird contortion of the fingers, right? Like your, your hand has to make this shape. And a lot of people build the chord on the fretboard and they never memorize the finger contortion, the hand contortion. So what I mean by hover your fingers is get all of your fingers over the spot that they, that they need to go down, get them over the spot without actually making contact with any of the strings, just have them float above so that they're all right over the spot that they need to be. And then once that contortion is locked in, drop it down. Okay, now a lot of students, when I first show them this, have a really hard time. They're like, oh my God, that's so hard. Meanwhile, they've been playing a D chord for months. So if you start with this, if you get your fingers to make that contortion, really easily from day one, then that D chord, you're just gonna be able to drop it right down. You're not gonna have to build it on the fretboard. So, for practicing this chord switch, D to E, we go from D, then we're gonna float and hover our fingers right above the E. Now this might feel really awkward. Take your time. It could take 30 seconds just to get it them all to just be hovering right up top. You're gonna to find your fingers shaking. They're gonna be wanting to spread apart. Once you get that contortion, drop it down. Then do the same thing for the D. Come back, hover it above, hover those fingers above, and then drop it down and play the chord. So with any new chord you learn and any chord switch that you're working on, practice hovering your fingers above the chord and then dropping it down so that you get that contortion so you can just switch chords without building the chord one finger at a time. All your fingers start to move together. Number two is strengthen each finger separately. Now this kind of sounds counterintuitive based on what I said in tip number one, which was to get all the fingers to go down at the same time, but it's not because a lot of times when you go to play a chord, there's one finger that's slowing everything down. Like let's say you go to play a D and it's that third finger, and then you get it in. So we wanna train each finger to be independent. We want each finger to kind of be able to hold its own so that when you go to have all of them working together, you don't have that weakest link finger. So let's say we had the D chord. First thing I'm gonna do is put all my attention on the first finger. I wanna really analyze going from a D to an E what actually happens. So I'm visualizing what's gonna happen. This one's really easy. The first finger just slides right back. So I'm gonna go to switch and then boom, get that first finger in place and then play the rest of the chord. Switch back to the D, boom, first finger in place, then get the rest down, play the chord. Okay, so that one was easy. Second finger, let me just visualize the pathway. All right, from the D, the second finger's gotta go all the way up to the second fret of the A string. So it goes from the second fret of the high E to the second fret of the A. So I'm just kind of analyzing that motion. And then one, two, three, boom, get that one down, and then the rest down. One, two, three, boom, get that second finger down, and then the rest. So I'm just working on that one finger. Then I do the same thing with the third finger, starting on the E chord. All right, I got the third finger on the second fret of the D string and then it's gotta go to the third fret of the B string. All right, so here we go. Play the E, one, two, three, boom. Got that third one down, then build the rest of the chord. Same thing, one, two, three, boom. Got that third one down, then build the rest of the, of the E chord. One, two, three, got the third one down, then build the rest of the D, one, two, three, got the third one down on the E, build the rest of the E. So this is just training to really analyze what's the most efficient pathway for each finger and to really get that finger to do what it has to do instead of doing things like this. I see this all the time. You know, the whole finger, hand comes off and it's like, whoa, but we wanna get these motions to be 
fast and efficient. Tip number three, practice dropping the chord. What I mean by that is whenever we make a chord switch, we drop our fingers in place, right? We drop them on the fretboard and we make the switch. Now we can practice dropping our fingers onto the chord over and over again like this. So I play a D chord, I lift it up, I drop it. And I just get used to that feeling. I could do that over and over again. And I get used to the feeling of dropping them all at the same time. So this is a lot like number one, where we hover the fingers, but now we just drop them in place. I could do that on the E. Just practice dropping it. All right. Tip number four, time your chord changes. Nothing makes you feel better than seeing your actual progress, and that could be hard on guitar. Two things that are great, games, games are always fun, challenges, and two is being able to see your progress, and that's something that happens in games. You get to the next level, and you're like, yeah, I'm getting better, and that makes you wanna keep playing, right? So what I'm gonna do to gamify my chord switches is set a timer for one minute. So I've got my timer set for one minute, I'm gonna count how many times I could switch between D and E in one minute. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So whatever your number is, write it down and see if you could beat the record either the second minute or the next day and really track your progress. The most important thing though is don't get sloppy. You wanna make sure every note is ringing out and your technique is clean. So at first, it might be like this. And that's okay. The next day, it might be like this. Right? And then before you know it. Tip number five. Always prioritize good timing and rhythm over anything else. Now what I mean by that is, let's say you are trying to play a song for somebody, with somebody, for yourself, and the song goes like this. Now, you might find yourself doing this. Now, if you played with someone like that, it would drive them crazy, it would make them feel anxious, and they would have to keep stopping and starting because you prioritized the fancy strumming pattern over your timing. Never do that. Always play within your means when it is time to actually play the song. In other words, if you did this instead, I would be much happier to play with you because your rhythm is solid. So that's just an example of how you might want to simplify in the moment where it's actually time to play instead of being sloppy and missing beats and all that stuff. But one thing you can do whenever you learn a new song and you learn new chord switches, just play the switch, meaning just play on the first beat. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Four. I happen to be playing D, C add nine, and G. So, so I can just go one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. That's how you want to start. Make sure you can make the switch at the right moment before trying to add in strum patterns and rhythms, which is gonna keep you from switching at the right moment. Most important thing is switching at the right moment. Another thing is just slowing the song down. Let's say you really do wanna do that strum pattern. hard to do it fast. Slow the whole song down instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You can do one, two, three, four. 
So there's nothing wrong with taking a fast song and turning it into a ballad while you're still trying to get your skills together. Because the most important thing is playing in time. And if you develop that habit in the beginning, then you just keep turning that speed knob, but your technique is always good as opposed to trying to play outside of your means in a really sloppy way, because then you'll just always stay sloppy even as you turn up the speed knob. All right, everybody, that was my top five tips for chord switching. I hope you found them helpful. I hope you have fun practicing this stuff. If you want to learn more about playing guitar, head over to guitartricks.com. If you want to see more lessons like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Happy playing.